Hello everyone, we are back with another video. I am Shubham Srivastav and you are watching Top Notch Reviews. In today's topic, we are going to discuss about the Intel processors. Basically, we are going to focus on the Core i3, i5, i7 as well as the i9 processors. Before we get started, I'm going to tell you two things. One is the cache memory, other is the hyperthreading. So, what is hyperthreading? Hyperthreading is nothing but each physical core is represented as two logical cores. That means uh, the OS detects as uh, two cores instead of one single physical core. That means the performance is going to be faster and the application is going to run faster and it's very good for the performance. Coming to the cache memory, what is a cache memory? Cache memory is a small amount of memory that is built into the processor so that uh, the processor can grab data from the cache memory faster. The cache memory holds the copy of a data present in the RAM. Not the whole, uh, the whole data in the RAM but some amount of data the application that is running. It holds some, on, some amount of data so that the processor can grab it quickly and perform the task. So the performance become very faster when the cache memory is more. So coming to the Core i3 processor. The Core i3 processor is the entry level processor brought to you by Intel. This processor has two cores. It's a dual core processor and it supports hyperthreading. That means OS detects as four cores instead of two cores. And it can perform as a quad core but not the performance not going to be that high but still it can perform as a quad core. Coming to the boost, the Core i3 cannot be boosted, downside to the Core i3, but I guess after the release of the Ryzen series, the Intel is going to work on their next gen so that it can be boosted and the total number of cores might be increased in the 8th gen maybe, because in the 6th and 7th gen, it has 2 cores and 4 threads. The clock frequency of Core i3 is 3.5. 4 gigahertz to 4.2 gigahertz nice and coming to the core i5 the core i3 is generally used for uh, small applications such as microsoft office and uh, small games such as nfs most wanted and the daily usage the core i3 is more than enough coming to the core i5 processor the core i5 processor is the mid-end processor given uh, provided by the intel company the core i5 processor has four cores and it does not support hyperthreading but it supports turbo boost so the clock frequency is 2.4 gigahertz to 3.8 gigahertz and this processor is used for uh, mid-end gaming and uh, such as small software such as sony vega pro for video editing and uh, video editing it's good and uh, the performance of the processor is really awesome for the mid-end users who doesn't love to game very high-end games such as crisis 3 or something Coming to the Core i7, the Core i7 is a quad core processor, the total number of cores are 4 but it supports hyperthreading so the total number of threads in the processors are 8 and it supports turbo boost man that's awesome the clock frequency of Core i7 is 2.8 GHz to 4.2 GHz and that's awesome the cache memory for core i7 is 8 MB in some processor in the latest 7th gen processor you might get a little more such as 12 MB or something the core i7 is used for high end purposes such as uh, running heavy games crisis 3 battlefield 1 and rendering videos on adobe premiere cc and uh, other uh, editing applications for video rendering and all it's very really awesome Coming to the Core i9, the Core i9 is the latest launch by the Intel company. It has come in around Feb or March 2017. The Core i7 uh, has 3 or 4 variants starting with 10 cores, 20 threads and that's awesome. 2, 18 cores and 36 threads. Wow, 18 cores. Can you just imagine the performance of the processor and beat this the total number of cache memory for the 10 core 20 thread processor is 13.75 megabytes and the cache memory for 18 core 36 threads processor is 23.75 MB wow 
so the performance is going to be a killer and the clock frequency is 4 gigahertz to 4.5 gigahertz man the intel has leveled up his game by using the 14 nanometer technology just imagine the performance delivered by this core i9 processor it's gonna be amazing so i'm gonna suggest you few processors for your gaming in budget and mid-end and high-end so for the budget i'm gonna suggest you the core i3 6100 for the mid-end i'm gonna suggest you core i5 6600 6 gen both are 6 gen for the core i7 i'm gonna suggest you the 6900 I'm not suggesting you the 7700 because it's not that good performance but still Intel Core i7 6950K has performed the best till now on the benchmark as far as I've seen but I don't know the Intel Core i9 haven't been tested till now completely so the performance is not out completely but seeing the specifications on the paper it's not alone in this game AMD have just launched its Ryzen series that is the Ryzen 3, Ryzen 5, Ryzen 7 uh, to compete with the Intel Core i3, i5 as well as the i7 so if you guys are interested to watch a separate video on Ryzen just hit the like button and do comment so I'll just make a separate video upon the Ryzen series so before you buy a processor you have always wondered there's random numbers after the family name that is the Core i3 or i5 or i7 there is some random numbers such as 6500, There are various uh, processors available in the market uh, separate for desktop and separate for laptops. So talking about the desktop processor, there are two kinds of processor. One is without any alphabet in the end and the other one is having a K at the end of the number. The K stands for uh, overclocking. That means the processor can be overclocked. For overclocking your system, should, uh, your system should have a great cooling so that uh, the heat dissipated by the processor can be absorbed and taken away. And coming to the laptop processor, there are three or four kind of it. At the end, if you see U, Y, H, HQ, and HK, where U stands for ultra ultra low power consumption, Y stands for extremely low power consumption. H stands for high performance processor and HQ stands for high performance quad core processor. The HK stands for high performance unlock processor. These five kind of processors are available for the laptops. So coming to the name, the Intel Core i7, the i7 stands for the family name. The K, the first seven stands for the generation and the, sec, the other three stands for the range. The last alphabet uh, determines whether the processor can be overclocked or not and how is the performance of the processor and the power consumption. So guys if you like the video please hit that like button. Do comment your suggestions and please subscribe to my channel for more further interesting videos. Peace.